Today at shopdap.com, we show you how to install Super Pro caster control arms on a Mark 7. So why would you want to replace or upgrade the control arms on your Mark 7? So these control arms most notably increase the caster of your vehicle by one degree. Caster is an alignment angle which determines the placement of your wheel assembly. This is most easy to understand by knowing that this will push forward if you have positive caster and backwards if you have negative caster. So we're increasing the caster of this vehicle which means we're pushing this wheel assembly further to the front of the vehicle so that's going to be by one degree like so. The, and this angle would necessarily be the shock angle and that's going to be your, your caster angle. They also can change the camber of the vehicle of up to negative half a degree. Camber is an angle that is the face of the wheel is going to determine the fore and aft movement side to side. So if you have negative camber, the wheel would be t kicked in more. If you have positive camber, it'd be kicked out more. So as we lift this vehicle up, you'll take a look and you'll see the camber of this change as the vehicle goes up in the air, just to give you an idea of the change that you'll see. When a vehicle hangs, you generally tend to have more positive camber or at least less negative camber. So the face of the wheel will come more flat. This car does have camber mounts on it and it's modified. So we do have negative camber intended for it. These control arms are also lighter than the factory ones because they are aluminum as opposed to these steel ones that would come factory in the vehicle. And they have upgraded bushings that are going to be harder and stiffer than the factory ones, which means they're gonna flex less and you'll have more stability under hard cornering conditions. If you're not familiar with Super Pro, they are a Australian based company who makes suspension components for a variety of vehicles. We also recently shot a video explaining the your camber mounts, which also is for increasing handling on your car uh, on the same type of vehicle. So if that is something you're interested in, we will link it in the description below. Before we get to our install, just know that all the products and parts talked about in this video will be linked in the description where you can find it on our website, shopdap.com. Let's get into our install. To start this job, you need to have your vehicle on the lift. If you're not sure how to lift your vehicle onto jack stands properly, we have a video about jacking up a Mark 7 that we'll link to in the description. We're gonna start by removing our wheel and we're gonna remove both of them and then we're gonna get underneath the vehicle. Now we have an all track, so we have a full skid plate on our vehicle. Any other MQB car has some variation of, it, of a lower splash shield. It's not gonna be as substantial as this one. And we're gonna remove this and get access to our subframe. Here are the control arms we're gonna be removing right here and here. Now these are pretty simple to remove and replace with some caveat. The bolts we're gonna be removing are these two front ones here, these six outer nuts to the ball joints, and then the one bolt back here. This is going, what is required to remove these control arms from the vehicle. But this bolt right here is blocked by this transmission. So when you loosen this, it's not going to be able to back out far enough. So this leaves you two options. You can either drop this subframe down to allow this bolt to clear the transmission, or you can try to jack the transmission up. That may be an option, but is it going to be limited by the engine mounts in the vehicle? So because of that, and you're already underneath the vehicle, it's going to most likely require removal of this subframe or at least loosening of it to drop it down and allow this bolt to slide all the way out. We're gonna go ahead and replace our passenger side control arm. We are gonna cut back and show you in detail the driver's side because that is the hard one and this is the simple side. Now we've installed our passenger side control arm. We are going to proceed with installing the driver's side. To do that, we do have to drop this subframe. Before we get into that, I did try to jack up the transmission just to see if it, how much clearance it would allow us on this bolt. It is not enough while the trans mount is in. So if you didn't want to do it this way, you could remove that transmission mount up top and jack it up that way. We do have a DIY on transmission mounts if you didn't want to remove the subframe. There's not a lot of reason why you should do that because re regardless, you should get an alignment after installing these control arms in the first place, but uh, that is an option for you. In addition to that, there are some things to consider upgrading or installing while you're doing this job. Uh, first, most notably is going to be the hardware for this. This hardware is going to be intended to be replaced when you are removing it from the vehicle. You also can replace these bolts or at least upgrade this setup for the mounting of the subframe with a dead set kit. This is most commonly the most popular one we have is from T-Roll Sport. They use collars around the bolts to lock everything in place 
because this subframe is an adjustable alignment, it shifts the ability left, right, front and back, which is something that you want to make sure you lock down to prevent shifting or bolts loosening under hard driving circumstances this is for vehicles who might use track use or heavy spirited driving and they have noise or movement coming from their subframe. In addition to that, you are going to potentially consider replacing the subframe itself. Some people upgrade to the Audi aluminum subframe. This is gonna be lighter than the steel setup and is the reason why people go down that road. You also would consider if you're doing a front sway bar, now would be the time. You do not wanna to have to try to remove this subframe and take it down to replace your sway bar if you upgrade it at a later date. On some vehicles, you may be able to get away with replacing the front sway bar with it in the car on all wheel drive cars. It's almost likely impossible that you could potentially replace it with this subframe in. So you'd have to drop it down to do that as well, which is something that you would wanna do at this time as well. We are not gonna be doing those things. We are going to be just dropping this down to show you the most basic version of what is the option for doing this install. We're gonna start by getting the subframe supported. So I'm gonna throw this block of wood in here and then we're gonna get our pole jack in. Now you are probably gonna be using a floor jack and you're gonna be doing this on jack stands. <sighs> that sucks for you. Now I'm gonna break loose these 16s. Now this should be all we need to do with this pendulum mount or, or some called a dog bone mount. This is something that we're gonna to need to allow this subframe to come loose from the engine and transmission here. Very important note on these bolts, if you remove them, one is longer than the other. If you run this one, the long one up into here, you'll, you will blast a hole in your transmission case and you will need a new transmission. So don't do that. Make sure you know where they go. You can, if you feel compelled to, you can label them or do whatever you need to do, but make sure the short one goes in the short side. It is thicker on the long one. We're gonna be removing the subframe bolts. Now, they are on the passenger side here through this hole in the control arm and here. And on this side, same through the control arm here and this one here. Now this one will need to be removed as well because this is the rear control arm bolt that has a nut up top. Now at this point, Super Pro mentions that you to mark the subframe before you remove everything to get everything back in place. My opinion is that you are gonna wanna do an alignment regardless, but I'm gonna show you where you, how you could mark it if you wanted that to help you. It would be helpful to at least get you closer to where you make sure you don't have an alignment issue, which is why you might wanna consider it regardless. Now the easiest way to know where the alignment is is to leave some of this in place. Now, I believe I can make this effective is by loosening this one and not removing it completely, both rear bolts, and you'll see witness marks from this washer, and we can mark the other bolt on the front side. All right, if you take a look here, you can see I've kind of scraped away a lot of dirt and grime around this meeting point where the subframe and the body meet. This will help us know exactly where we're at here in terms of mounting for this. I'm gonna start by loosening these two rear bolts and I'm gonna leave them threaded into the car. Now for these, you're gonna need a long extension and also keep in mind, this is all that's holding the subframe up now. So as we loosen this, I would expect this whole thing to start dropping. So be aware of that if you're under the vehicle and you're working on a floor jack that everything is secure while you're moving it down. <sighs> Make sure you got your safety glasses on. Mine are not safety enough, apparently. So as we go down here, you should see the subframe dropping. And right now, this pole jack is completely off. So we can take a look and see if we're cleared here. And it looks like we are clear. So I'm gonna just give this enough support that it's not going to uh, then it's not going to loosen on us, but I think this should be enough for us to take this front 18 off. Now, again, we do have both of our rear mounting bolts threaded this in place. This thing can only go so far. Keep in mind, this is still attached to both the tie rods on the outer side and then also the steering rack attaches to the car through the steering joint. So this thing is not really gonna be going anywhere necessarily. It couldn't really fall out of the car completely, um, but you do wanna make sure that you don't put too much stress on that stuff and keep this thing in place. Now we're gonna loosen that 18 and it clears. Now we have this 18 millimeter and we have an 18 millimeter wrench up top on top of the subframe because there's a nut up there holding it in place. And we're gonna remove that 
and just make sure you get that nut so you don't lose it when you're trying to go back in. I'll, I take it out just to make sure. Now we're gonna take off our 16 millimeter ball joint nuts. Just three of them. Now at this point, I have a pry bar here and it pops off. Usually it's not gonna pop off that easy. Uh, and then you're gonna have to get in from here. So there is a notch here in the subframe. You can stick a screwdriver in there and kind of help pry it out like so. If you see that came out pretty easy, depending on how many miles are on there, that may or may not be easier. All right, so I'm just gonna put this on the edge where the metal is and then I'm gonna pry out. And it should allow us to move that subframe and pry it right out of the subframe right there. Okay, so first we're gonna weigh our steel control arm and that's 6.55 and our aluminum ones from super pro 6.4 there you have it weight savings race car now we have polyurethane bushings on this that come on the outside here they come separately you you mount them in place all they do is snap on like so you are going to want to lubricate them polyurethane is something that can make noise over time so you will want to make sure that these are lubed to prevent any noise from happening. So we're gonna lubricate these bushings up and then we're gonna get ready to mount this control arm in place. Just so you know, this joint, you have to make sure you flex it and get it straight to make these things mount easily. And then we can reinstall it into the car. Okay, so we're gonna lubricate the edges of this thing just to make sure that where it meets the subframe of the car, it's not gonna get a lot of squeaking on there and then we can reinstall it. Now, because the subframe is dropped, it actually gives you a better angle at this rear mount. The other side I did before the subframe was dropped and it actually had kind of a weird angle. So it's probably better to drop the subframe before you do anything, and then you can get everything in there a little bit easier. Okay, so I'm gonna be using this dead blow hammer. You're gonna to wanna to do something like this. And you're, this is a plastic hammer with, uh, gives you the ability to get this in place. You are gonna to wanna to make sure as you hammer this in, because there's a, a weird angle of all of this joint back here, you wanna make sure that the bushing isn't getting pinched and, and gets damaged while you're trying to hammer this in place. So um, that's really, really important. And once you do that, you can kind of walk it back and forth and then you can watch your holes to make sure you get this thing mounted in place. Okay, now what I've always found the easiest way to get this stuff to line up perfectly is take a screwdriver and then you can kind of pry it in place how you need it to. That's the best way to get this in place. You can use the edge of a screwdriver to kind of pry on it. You see it pulled it in there and that should be pretty good. So there we go there and we're gonna pry the rear one as well, which you gotta make sure this thing is seated all the way. So that is clearly not seated all the way, but I'm gonna leave this in place and we'll get that rear one mounted. And same deal here with this one is you're gonna have to do some wiggling to get that in place. Now this one goes all the way through, so it can be helpful to get that mounted in place. Now you may be able to feel it. Yep, I do feel the tip of that bolt coming through the top. So I should be able to just grab this and send this thing home. Like that. If that gives you too much resistance, you do, don't just continue to smash on that thing. Now the last thing you have to do is get these three ball joint studs in through this control arm. So what I'm gonna do is push this out and then try to bend this ball joint in place and kind of stick my head underneath. And it went in place real easy that time. I wouldn't necessarily expect it to go that, that smooth every time. There you go, do a little wiggle like that and then it kicked right in. Now you also can do something which is grab a big pair of channel locks and grab on these back parts of these studs and, and the control arm itself. You will wanna make sure you put something underneath here to prevent the control arm from getting damaged when you get these studs to come through. Okay, so this wasn't getting threaded in easily, so what I had to do is wiggle, kind of wiggle the control arm like this to get it to thread, and that's, that's usually a common thing you'll need to do when you have things like that. You do not wanna start using a ratchet or a wrench on any of this stuff until you know that it's, it's thoroughly threaded in there. Otherwise, you could strip this and this is your subframe, and if you strip that, you're gonna be in big trouble. Now, before you get the subframe up, you will wanna tighten these bolts down. We will give you the torque specs as we tighten all these bolts, starting with this one. Then we'll move on to our outer ball joint bolts, the rear control arm bolt and nut, the front subframe mounts, and the rear subframe mounts. Okay, so we have 
everything installed and I'm going to use our floor jack here to get this back up. So should be pretty simple. Get it back to where it stops and you can watch it from the bottom and look up until it meets the body. Then we can get our bolt in place. Now again, you could shift this a little bit around. Uh, shifting the subframe is probably easier said than done. You can probably get a pry bar in there and get it to move a little bit on you. And we're gonna get both these threaded in place. Now, Super Pro does recommend moving the subframe all the way back. Uh, what I would say is if that is a concern for rubbing, that isn't going to generally be the case unless you're probably heavily modified in some way uh, that you have to worry about any rubbing and you're planning on going real low, in which case you probably could rub anyway, regardless of what you do. Now again, we have all of our stuff threaded in. Before you start to tighten any of these bolts with a ratchet, you need to make sure that, that Nathan <laughs> sneezes in the middle of you talking. You will wanna make sure that all of these are threaded in place. If you strip the threads on here, you're actually stripping the threads in the body itself, in which case you're gonna have a real bad day and you don't wanna do that. So make sure you've got these things threaded by hand really well. You can wiggle the subframe like this. This will help you is push back on, in this case, I have to push back on this and this is all threaded in place. So these are all threaded. I'm going to now run them up with a ratchet by hand and then get everything tightened in place. Okay, so now we have to thread these in. Now I already have these pre-threaded in, but it's really important to note that you have to rotate the engine and transmission backwards to get these to line up. So you have a couple options. In this car, because we have all wheel drive, you can stick a pry bar in here and then just use it to lean on the transmission casing here. Now you can use that and then pull this forward and these thread in nice and clean. If you see I let go, it doesn't thread in. So you also can hook on a ratchet strap to here. There's a hook up top here and then hook it onto the subframe and help you pull it back. Since you may or may not have the ability to do it this way, that would be an easy way that would be able to be done at home and it's an option. So we're gonna tighten these up and we will torque them down. We'll put the torque spec on screen here and then we're gonna reinstall all of our low engine shield stuff. So we just finished our install and now we're doing a test drive. We had the vehicle aligned before we're doing this. You always wanna make sure you get that done. Make sure you don't smoke your tires while you're doing that. Uh, the biggest improvements I've seen with this is more precision in the steering feel. That's the, a lot of the feedback I've seen online about it were related to steering feel and uh, a lot of people communicate numbness related to steering feel. I think that this does, I don't know if this necessarily was numb before, but it definitely improves steering feel and precision while you're going through turns. So I would say I'm really happy with the control arms. Thanks for watching. Make sure on tightening you follow Newton's Law of Meters for all specifications on your torque wrench. If you like this video, be sure to give a thumbs up and subscribe for more like it and links to all the products talked about in the description below.